Hello everybody and welcome back. I am KRX and we're going to be doing another SWOT analysis for a random nation in EU4. Looking at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, we're going to be assessing the diplomatic ecosystem of a country that we've probably never played before. Um, and we will also be looking at the internal situation, stability-wise, economy, sort of goals for our country, ambitions, maybe some of the ide ideology and sort of some of the thematics elements that will sort of drive us forward. Maybe looking at some of the specific missions if the country is lucky enough, lucky enough to have their own sort of mission tree. So let's pick a random nation here. And essentially, again, um, we're just going to be going with the flow. This is not going to be for a strat. That We are not trying to tell people a strategy for playing a specific nation. We are showing people a process of developing a strategy for a nation. So this is something, this is an exercise for people that are not complete beginners, but also people who are not experts. This is like one step up from beginner. These are people that are trying to level up. I'm doing this for myself, trying to get a little bit better at the game myself, and just going through this process of like, okay, let's set up the country. Let's look at opening moves. Let's figure out a plan. How do we how do we uh, decipher this, this situation? How do we move forward? And what do we do, right? What do we do? Sometimes one of the hardest things to figure out in this game is what can we do? What should we do? Where do we go first, right? And we're going to be trying to talk through and discuss that strategy by looking at different factors and just making decisions. And there we go. We are playing as air. Boom, air. Let's get in there. Let's get in here for air. Let's see what the situation is here. I've never played air before in my life. I'm trying to think the closest nation I've played. I have done Congo. We have done African power on the channel as Congo. So we've played Congo before. Uh, I have, I believe I've also played as some of these fetishist nations when I was really bad at the game, like really a new player, and I just tried to basically push back the Sunnis, but we're actually air, and we are one of the Sunni nations here. And we could see that Mali is a Sunni nation, even though most of their country is fetishist people, but they are Sunni. Um, and so basically there's kind of a battle line here, right? We have the Sunni nations here, and we have the fetishist nations down here, and the fetishists are definitely outnumbered by the Sunnis. Um, we have Songhai as a powerful Sunni nation, but they have rivaled us. So let's just look at the situation here. It's a very unique ecosystem here in Western Africa. Mali's definitely going to be a really good potential ally. Um, I think a lot of, if we are bordering any, oh, we're not bordering any of the fetishist nations. All of these guys are a Sunni brethren, which to be fair is okay, because it's nice to know that if we conquer these little dudes right here, then we'll be able to not have to convert their land. So beating up Songhai, beating up these guys here, that, that could be really, really good. These guys have rivaled us. Um, yeah, I was kind of over on the edge of the world. We might want to actually ally them just to sort of like, sort of team up with them against these guys, right? Who look a little bit, we have a big country, but I think ultimately we're relatively weak compared to some of these other nations. Like Songhai, I think is significantly higher development than us. 16 development capital. If we click on air, it's only nine, right? So our total development in our country, these are these are terrible provinces here. This is a bunch of junk land. All of these are three development. Yeah, we literally have a total of 25 development in our country, just doing quick math there. And uh, Songhai has significantly more than that, I guarantee it. So we are quite a bit weaker than Songhai. I think what we do is we probably try to get the alliance with Mali if they'll accept it. We probably could get this if we butter them up. Mali is a very rich country at the beginning of the game because they have a lot of the gold in the region. We are going to probably try to beat up one of the weaker nations here, but the actual nation that we decide to beat up is kind of almost based on how the alliance network breaks out. We could try to predict that by looking at this situation here. It looks like there's a good relationship between these guys. They might actually ally Songhai. That's kind of a problem. That's kind of a problem. These guys are a little bit further away, but it looks like also Songhai does like them as well. They're not going to write it. They're, they're going to be at odds end here. We could try to, it's it's weird. It's like, do we ally Yao? Do we ally this country because they just want to ally us right away? And focus on beating up these dudes because they're kind of our rival here. Already they've announced us. You know what? I think we rival these guys. I think I think we rival the two guys that have rivaled us. I think that's just going to be a done deal. But the question is, do we rival one of these other weaklings and, and sort of try to like just dogpile on them? Could be that Yao might not get any meaningful alliances here. We might be able to just sort of dogpile onto these guys. Clicking on their land, uh, quite a bit higher value than us. Actually, wow, Yao is actually much more powerful than I thought. Let's rival these little dudes down here who actually have some good land as well. 
And we'll try to ally these guys, yeah. We'll try to ally them, because they're kind of at the edge of the world, so I don't think they'll be too at risk of being attacked. Uh, so we're actually one of the weaker nations in this area, despite our size, right? The size is de definitely deceptive. The only thing I'm worried about is if we rival these guys, they will get a good alliance with Songhai. But that's just kind of how it goes, I think. Let's ally Yao, and let's actually be building up a spy network against this country here. But I think we're going to want to be simultaneously building up spy networks on most of our enemies on our borders, right? But I think we're going to start with, with this guy, because I think we could use Yao together as a team and beat these guys up as a team. Covert actions, build a spy network. I think the other thing we're going to do is we're just try to butter up... Uh... Are these guys powerful? And we could go to the ledger here and just try to see, like, who is the big player in these areas? Mali is a big player. Congo is kind of far away. They actually can't get up here. They're, it's completely irrelevant. Congo does not matter here. These guys are relatively strong and they're willing to ally us right away. How is their opinion with Mali? Not good. These guys diplomatically are kind of a tricky situation. It looks like they have a number of enemies right off the bat. Timbuktu I don't think is very strong though. So that's kind of interesting. We could ally these guys. They might be just as helpful as Mali to be honest. Although they're more likely to get into a bad war early on. Let's just ally them and hope for the best. And we'll do that by sort of initializing the royal marriage, and then they might send us the alliance request. Okay. So if we go into our decisions, we have a decision here to increase missionary strength versus the heretics. Totally fine. Might as well hit that. I don't think there's any downside of that. We have a relatively lousy ruler, so we could make them into a general and hope for the best there. A 1-2-1 one, one is not great, but a siege pip is okay. One fire is better than nothing. And to maneuver, again, I guess, you know, I guess we just got to be gr grateful for what we got. We might end up rolling another one, uh, just to hope for something better there. If we look at our modifiers here, we have extra movement speed, which is kind of interesting. Caravan power. Land leader shock, but only once we finish all of our traditions, our ideas, our, our sort of custom ideas here. Trade efficiency. Uh, morale of armies, 15%. That's actually kind of cool. These are unique ideas for air, too. 15% morale is no joke. I mean, this is looking... We're looking like the French down here of, of Western Africa with a lawn going on here. Let's focus on our military power so we could race up to the first tech because uh, that's going to be more morale. That's going to be a big one. Tech 3 is going to be a big one. Tech 4 is also a big one, too. We do not have... Um, the institution down here. So unfortunately, there might be a little bit of a situation here. We're paying a 50% tech penalty. So I don't know how we're going to handle that. I don't know if we're going to try to boost feudalism. Is that spreading down here on its own? It is slowly spreading in some of these larger development capitals because I think these development, these capitals are, well, I don't know. I don't know why it's spreading in this province, but it's not spreading in this province, to be honest. I have no clue. It's still, but at this rate, it's going to never happen. It's never going to happen. We might have to develop our own land here. Cool development costs. We don't have any good provinces to develop, though. All these have negative penalties. Yikes. I mean, are there any grassland provinces, like, nearby that we could try to conquer? Desert, Savannah. Savannah, what kind of penalty there? It's only a 15% penalty in Savannah. It's certainly not good. It's not bad. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any grassland provinces at all. They're just absolutely terrible. Uh, step is a minus 30%. Grass led way down here, but that's going to be a minute to get down there into, into the Benin area. Uh, but eventually that would be a really good province down there to develop for maybe like colonialism or something in the future. Our economy is not good. Not good. Do we have a fort? We do start with an actual fort here. We don't have to pay for that right now. That's going to get us a little bit into the green. We are going to want it to build up to our force load. We might actually need to go beyond that, too. Are we paying for cav? The thing is, we could try to get rid of this cav and build more infantry. Or we could just sort of hold on to that cav while the game, like in the, for the initial war, because the cav is going to do a certain amount of additional damage. I don't know if the cav early on is actually going to do much of anything for us. It's still one in the fire phase. 
a 1.0, it's still significantly more damage than the infantry. Hmm. Okay, if we abolish that, uh, we'll get some native unrest, which would be really good. So we have just generic missions here. Generic missions uh, build up to our force limit. We'll get some extra morale of armies. That's good. Trustworthy allies will work on that, and the high income will work on that. But we don't have anything special. I'm just kind of clicking through here and just kind of looking at things. But we could actually get a new heir by just sort of reducing prestige and legitimacy. We don't need that. We're a sultan. We'll get a new heir one way or another. Not having a legal heir is totally dandy. Totally fine. Of course, we don't have to pay for our armies. We could drill our troops, but I don't really feel like... Drilling troops is very strong, especially with the 1.3. We could drill, we could get more professionalism faster, and we can also... Um, the, the benefits from it, from drilling, are much stronger. We can afford it, let's do it. I don't know, this is kind of a tricky situation, but I think we've actually set up our country, right? We've done the initial sort of... We've looked at our opportunities diplomatically and our sort of threats here. Songhai is going to be the biggest threat in the region for sure. And they've rivaled us, so they're coming for us. Um, we could look at our estates here. Now, unfortunately, we're starting with the 29.998. I think this is a bug. I think you're supposed to start with 30%, but either way, we need to initialize uh, seize land to get above 34% there. That should help our economy a little bit when that updates. Let's go into the estates and sort of just start hitting the traditional buttons here. We can't give away any crown land because we're at 34%. We need to build up more crown land before we could do religious state or do uh, the Olema land rights and, and, and stuff like that. We are not paying for any advisors. We really, it's going to be a while before we do that. So I don't think there's any reason to do this unless we just wanted to boost the influence with the clergy. This is good. Monthly piety is good. That pushes us up. Legalism gives them some influence. The more influence the clergy has the more uh, tax modifier boost we're going to be getting, which is good. This is a very sort of standard thing to click early on. It's going to give us 10 influence and 10 loyalty. And again, if we can get more influence with the clergy, that's going to be a good thing. This is going to be good once we sort of beat up on the neighboring Sunnis. Once we start going and attacking the heathens, the fetishist nations, this will be pretty good for us because it'll give, give us extra morale, but I don't think we're going to do that right away. I think we're okay for now. Looking at the nobility or the emirs. Manpower, I think, is going to be an issue. I think right now our manpower is okay, but I think man manpower is going to be an issue. We could trade a little bit of tax modifier for a significant amount of man manpower boost. I think that's really, really strong. I think that's really, really strong. Just doing sort of the, the sort of the initial stuff here, hitting the sort of the basic stuff. Again, we can't give away land. So all these estate ones that are sort of to give away crown land, we don't want to do that. Uh, we don't have any navy, so that's kind of an interesting thing there. We could reduce our national tax modifier by 5% to get some prestige. Prestige is good because it's morale in battle. It's global trade power. It's a number of good... Uh, presti having prestige is a good thing, right? Right now we're losing prestige. Uh, with this, we'd be gaining prestige, and we just have a little bit more of a bump, but I don't think we want to affect our economy. Our economy is very fragile right now. Very fragile. Yeah, I don't know. This is tricky. This is tricky. The Dimmy, I don't think there's really anything to do with the Dimmy for now. We don't need more leaders. We have plenty of leaders. We don't need this because we can't give away our crownland. That's fine. The Dimmy is just doing their thing. It says that we have one out of one leaders. I don't know if this is a bug or not. I don't think your ruler is supposed to count as a leader. I've, unless they change this. I've never noticed that before in the past. Usually your ruler does not count against your leader's score. So I'm wondering if this is some sort of bug that needs to be changed. Or if this was a deliberate change by the developers with the 1.3 patch. Not sure. We have merchants that are not doing anything. We could just be collecting here. We're not going to get much from that, to be honest. But it's better than nothing. And we could collect here because I think, yes, I, I don't think we lose any penalty for doing that. It'll be interesting to run this for a month to see if we actually are, how the economy looks after everything sort of updates after the first month. 
So we have the alliance there. We want to build the alliance here. We can't do this till December 12th, but we are going to try to snag that quickly. They've already offered it to us. Let's accept. Yao Yeo is it has given us a royal marriage. Good. 433. I'll take that. It's going to be hard to get the alliance with Mali, but realistically, we could still go for it. We could still go for it. We have nothing else to do with our diplomat. And I think we want to just continue to build up spy networks on both of these countries so that we have the option to kind of go to either one. So let's come down here and build a spy network here. Question is, who did Songhai... Ooh, Songhai is allied west. This is really good. This is really, really good. These guys are allied together. That's kind of a bummer. These guys are kind of cool. They got a bunch of a core, a sort of, they have reasons to go to war right off the bat. That's kind of interesting. It looks like uh, these guys are, are offering an alliance to us. Looking at our own diplomacy here, we're at two out of four. What the heck? Why not? We're not attacking those guys anytime soon. There's a buffer between us and them. So we could still potentially get the Mali alliance, but it looks like it's going to be a, a minute before that comes in. In fact, they're just not going to want to do it. Mali's not going to want to do it. It's pointless. I don't know if we want to actually royal... I guess I didn't select that quick enough, or did I select that accidentally? No, we didn't select that. We just It just kind of closed on its own. The royal of marriage here is a little tough, because I think eventually we are going to want to attack these guys. Let's just sure that up. We've got up to our force limit, so we'll be able to in the first war, right? In the first war here, these guys are drilling, drilling, drilling. Let's actually stop drilling here because I think we're going to be looking to actually fight in a war very soon. Question is, who are we going to be able to call in? We have 8,000 troops. We could just swoop in here, stack wipe these guys right here and just sort of ambush them. Especially, I mean, heck, we could actually splurge for like a military guy right off that land. Force limit modifier? Hmm. That doesn't help us. We're barely making money. That's paying for the military. Let's see exactly. These guys are a rival, right? Let's see what their, their military looks like. Their standing army. There is officially a issue going on here, right? Like, why do these guys only have 2,000 troops? There, there's definitely a bug right now. And the game is, is definitely broken with the, uh, with the patch that's come out. So hopefully... I mean, hopefully they'll fix this within a few weeks, but... It is going to take them time to work through some of the bugs that have popped in. If we attack into this nation right now, if we'd also be fighting NUP, we can promise these guys land. That's probably what we do. And we kind of betray these guys, to be honest, because if we could, if we could just win a really decisive war against these countries, that would be really, really good. Alternatively, wait a second. The alliance network here is the same. This is a triangular sort of alliance network we got going on here between these three nations. These guys are literally allied all to each other. So there's no sort of like weakest link going on here. This is a much more valuable province over here though. But why have these guys not built an army? That's what I would like to know. Why have these guys not built an army? I'm actually going to promise land for Kano. For these guys. Add them. I think we're not even going to call these guys in because we're not going to have to betray them. They might actually declare their own war uh, once this gets started. And I think for the most part, what we would do here is we would declare on this guy. No, no one wants to join. So we have to declare on this guy if we want our allies to join. But we could make this guy a co-belligerent. Right, because they're all allied. We could make up all co belligerents, but there's really no point to make NUP a co belligerent because we know that their only ally is NUP. So it's just a big triangle, right? So making the co belligerents going to be totally fine. Those guys will join. This gives us a, a distinct advantage here, as for some reason. Yeah, I, something, something's going on. These guys have no military, they only have two cavalry, 2,000 cavalry. But hey, there you go. The opening moves for air here with the 1.3 patch. Emperor DLC, all DLCs activated. Let's do it.
Let's see what happens. I think what we're going to want to do is actually come down here and actually beat these guys. No, they're going to move. Let's let's actually siege this uh, sort of block. These guys here, if we can. Why is it having us go that way? Because of the fort here. They do have a fort. Oh, this is interesting. Let's let these guys lock in here. Okay, we're going to fight him there. Should be a clean battle. If these guys get stacked wipe, which they should. Disengage there. What we can do is we can step on these guys. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good. That's not good. We don't want to lose prestige right now now actually because we're kind of in the middle of a battle it's going to affect our morale that's fine I changed my mind we'll just go with the flow um, we did win that battle but it was not a good situation here these guys are slowly kind of building up their own military Let's move out of there and regroup. More legitimacy and moving towards legalism. That's great. What I think we need to do now is we are going to try to stack wipe these dudes, but unfortunately... These guys are grouping up, it seems. They are grouping up. These guys could come over here and rejoin. Our allies are kind of doing their own thing. These guys are moving up into there. I think we're just going to try to divide and conquer here if we can. Okay. It's going to be a bad battle, but that's fine. We actually beat those guys before the other dude show, showed up. Okay. We can sort of consolidate our troops here. Get them a little bit more sort of fierce fighting. There we go. That's a stack wipe. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's actually just move these 700 over and grab our big group of units over here. We should be able to bop those dudes down here. Yeah, unfortunately, we have kind of a situation here where um, these guys are actually at war with a few different nations. We might be able to get them out quickly. We're actually going to engage here. Quick, easy battle. If we could siege these guys out. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Let's reinforce here. Let's come back around. Yeah, there's no reason why these guys shouldn't do that. Let's back them up. Can we get these guys just out of the war? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can't make it a core. Can we actually give this to our ally? Have these guys lost their troops completely? Yes, they have. Yes, they have. There we go, guys. There we go. The war is almost won. I know this is a little bit of a sort of long introduction here, but... We're actually kind of trying to move in here. That's fine. Government reform? We haven't really built any government reform. What I'm going to do is we're just going to grab these guys... Take a thousand, move them to here. Take a thousand, move them over to here. Scoot these guys over to siege that. We're just going to siege these guys down really quick. These dudes aren't really doing anything. They're just sort of holding this position. That's totally fine. Let's get them out of there. Manpower is actually doing okay. We forgot to actually activate the mission. 
for extra morale. That was us being silly. I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to give our ally this province down here. And they might actually convert that for us. There we go. The war is won. The war is won. Let's tell our ally to actually sink up here on the fort. And these guys are just fleeing. They're just running away. There we go. The war is completely won. And that is opening moves for air. So in this war we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to grab something like this and we'll be able to give this to our ally. They're saying they don't like that. This is going to go to them though, however. And you know, the reality is we don't really care too much about these guys if we could take this much sort of power. We could give them this province. What would that do? Six percent. It's hard to say. Dang, we need 9,000 dudes sitting on this stack. Dang. Takes a lot of guys to siege that. So basically, there we go, though, right? Lose some ducats, get some mercantilism, some, some influence with the merchant guilds. That's actually going to pay dividends, I think. There we go. The war is won. They only have 2,000 troops. I, I think to, to some degree, we could have won that regardless, but I think part of it was because the AI is a little broken here, uh, just with the patch that we're playing on, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, and uh, there you go. Opening moves for air. Kind of a SWOT analysis of their situation. We got some good alliances. We sort of dissected sort of the uh, diplomatic situation. We looked at our internal situation. The economy is not great, but it's okay. We could actually pay for this, uh, do those two missions, just to get a little bit of reduced uh, land maintenance, actually, so that we won't be bleeding as much money. We technically don't have any loans right here, which is kind of nice. These guys don't really like what we've what we're offering these guys though to be honest but there you go guys thanks everybody for watching that was a swat analysis on air and again this is just an exercise to see how can we open up how could we develop a strategy how can we you know who do we ally and why who do we attack and why and how that can build into a future plan right we're just developing a strategy it's not that we know how to play air it's that we can develop our own strategy through this methodology and stuff. The fact that they have a big, massive fort right there is kind of scary, though. I don't know if I like that so much. All right, guys. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.